All right, we're going to have a little discussion on some rings. Um, all of them are important. They all do a very special job. Um, but we're going to start with the top compression ring. Top compression ring is the one that provides the majority of the sealing to the cylinder wall. Uh, it is next the, the combustion and the compression side of the piston. And, and it has to do all of the sealing or the largest part of that sealing. Um, it also is the prime means of transferring heat from the uh, crown of the piston to the cylinder wall because it is in contact with the crown surface down along the side in that ring belt area. So we have uh, conduction of heat occurs through those two uh, solids which are in contact. It is also in contact with the cylinder wall, um, which is considerably cooler, right? Even on a, on a hot engine temperature, if we were up 195, 200 degrees, that is still considerably cooler than the combustion that is occurring above the top of that cylinder every time the piston fires. So through conduction, we are shedding a large part of that heat to the cylinder wall. All right. So looking at the shapes, we have keystone or trapezoidal, which uh, has a couple of, of good points. Um, there are variations of this half keystone as well, where this angle is square, and then we only have we have a bit of a flare up on that. And you can also see in some cases where that is flipped upside down and it's square across the top and flares out to the bottom. Makes no difference. Um, and just a, a straight rectangular ring. Um, typically you will find that usually on like smaller engines where they don't need a lot. What is the, and we just talked about, um, uh, conduction of heat through to the cylinder wall. This, the fact that this has a greater surface contact with the cylinder wall is one of the, the things that actually gives it a little bit of a benefit in that because we have more surface than we would maybe on a straight rectangular ring, it is able to conduct more heat away from the, the uh, crown of the piston. So the second compression ring, uh, pretty simple. It's located between the top compression ring and the oil control ring. Uh, you have to watch on some pistons. Uh, some pistons, there are additional grooves in there for some other reason other than to house the second compression ring. So make sure that you are placing the ring in the correct groove. Uh, it has two jobs. Um, first is to help limit combustion and compression gases leakage into the crankcase. Now we said that the top compression ring does majority of that job. But when that ring is sitting in the groove in my engine, there is a small gap uh, where, where they, they join. Some compression or combustion will pass through that. And the job of the second ring is to limit any of that gas that gets through the gap from going further down and into the crankcase. All right. Its second job is on its way down is to, uh, in either either of the downward strokes, which would be power or uh, um, intake, is to swipe off any oil that was left on the cylinder wall after the oil control ring has gone past. If the oil control ring has missed something, that we want to make sure that we scrape it off. We don't want it going up and into the combustion chamber or up into the top ring groove where it's going to gum things up and, and make a big mess. Um, shapes for the second uh, ring are sometimes barrel. They can be upward or downward tapered. Now this is different from trapezoidal. It is not the shape, but it simply means the end of this is, is cut on an angle or machined on an angle. There is the napier or scraper ring and I've tried to accentuate it here. On this bottom lower corner, there is a little bit of a hook. And that hook is designed as we move down in against the wall, right, that it's going to, again, pull any oil off. 
from the cylinder wall and direct it back towards the bottom. And rectangular, which is probably, I put a little stair beside here because it is probably the most common uh, shape of ring for a second control ring. Each of these other shapes has some pluses and minuses. All right, a barrel shape, right? And we start with a round shape on the end, but on a very short time, that's going to wear off because you have limited contact or very little contact. For a um, sealing ring, right, it is not going to do a good job of sealing because as the gas is pushing down here, it tends to push back on all that surface and move it away from the cylinder wall. And it doesn't do a very good job of scraping off the oil because as the oil builds up here, and again, it will can move it back. Um, these, right, if you look at these, they, they have pluses on both sides. This one will do a better job of removing oil, and this one will be doing a better job of, of, of catching any, any combustion and compression gases and sealing them off. All right, um, rectangular ring, um, good contact, or, or, and again, a little better contact than any of these other ones. And uh, it does every, all of the other bolt jobs uh, reasonably well. So the oil control ring uh, is in the lowest groove. Um, it has uh, two jobs, right? And basically uh, it, it's one of the rings that we can say is working all the time. On the upward stroke, so either upward stroke, it, its job is to spread oil on the cylinder wall. On the downward stroke, its job is to scrape all the oil off the cylinder wall. All right. Um, now, for that downward stroke and scraping the oil off, uh, different engine manufacturers and different styles will use different uh, designs into it. We have to, as we scrape that oil off, we have to do something with it. And in some cases, there are channels or grooves on the side of the skirt, which will allow that oil to escape downward, and they may direct it at the wrist pin. In other uh, designs, there may be holes drilled into the back of that oil control ring groove, and that will allow the uh, oil to escape through the oil control ring and into the uh, crankcase again. Um, but the oil control ring is one of the, the, the main uh, uh, things in an engine that will really can de determine whether it works for a long time or not. Um, think about the amount of, of times a piston goes up in a cylinder in the life of the engine, or, or let's just make it smaller, between oil changes. And now I know on some of our trucks, we're getting up like, you know, 40, 50,000 kilometers between oil changes because we have improved the, the materials the engines are made of and the oil that is working on the inside. But just imagine, so how many, how many uh, strokes each cylinder makes or each piston makes in that cylinder in 40,000 kilometers? And then think if I lost just one drop every thousand strokes, how long would it take before uh, the, you know, the check engine lights coming on because that engine is out of oil, all right? Now, over on the shape side, um, uh, this is not a, 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 a particular shape. Uh, I'm just basically, this is my little joke here. There's more shapes than a dog can shake a stick at, all right? Um, there are one piece, two piece, three piece oil control rings. There are, 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 are um, separated ones. They are, uh, you know, springs on the inside, uh, whatever. So do not get hung up. Just look at the oil control ring that you have at, or that you are when you're taking your engines apart and try and identify how they should be assembled. All right. And I'm going to put some little videos up or you will have them there to do. To do. All right, so this is a typical set of, of piston rings. We're going to start with the top one. Um, when you see it, because it is a brand new set, you should be able to see on there that it has the words up and top written on it. Uh, that identifies it as the top ring to go in the, in the top compression ring groove. And that this is the top side. Now, this one's pretty straightforward. It says top um, or up. There are 
other companies which will do any kind of a symbol on there. There can be a dot, a star, uh, you know, uh, the company logo, um, whatever. And if there's any marking at all on on the on the side surface, that indicates that that is the top side. All right. This is the second ring. Uh, and if you have a look at it, you can see that it is pretty much uh, rectangular. All right, and now I'm putting a little bit of a twist on it here to uh, allow you to identify it. Um, hopefully we can see that there. May not show up too good against the, from the distance. Um, this also has on it up and second to identify it as a second ring groove. Now, if you can see on this surface here, on the bottom surface, there is a little bit of a chamfer, and I'm going to draw it out on the board um, and so you can see it, but that is a reverse twist, and that is designed in the ring so that as it is moving up and down, it can actually twist in that groove and provide a better contact on the way uh, a bite into the cylinder wall a little better. So this is the uh, a two-piece oil control ring where the outside is a uh, single formed uh, uh, scraper and with this spring designed to fit on the inside of it. The spring has a small wire in it that allows it to be separated to get on and then go back in and hold it together. All right. When you are installing this on the piston, the gap in the spring must be on the opposite side from where the gap of the oil ring is. That is to prevent that wire from coming out and getting uh, wedged between the piston and the cylinder wall. Looking at installing these onto a piston, um, I've got this sitting here on the on the bench and it's, it's pretty much free. Uh, I would recommend that if you are doing this and you have your connecting rod on that you simply wrap the connecting rod with a rag or a soft cloth and and put it in the vise and secure and hold it securely now don't crank it too much you don't want to put a mark on the jaw but i'm going to go through and do this uh just try and doing it while i'm sitting here so there's the break in the wire i was talking about and we're going to put that on and we're going to put it together in the groove now uh, i have the gap looking right about here in relation to my wrist pin. So it is about 45 degrees between um, where the alignment with the wrist pin and the alignment with uh, the skirt. Uh, I do not want them lined up directly with the skirt or directly with the wrist pin. I take my uh, oil ring over the top of it and always use a ring spreader pliers uh, to do this job. Um, it will give you a lots of control when you're trying to get it over and it is uh, prevents the the ring from getting a twist in it as well. So simply just op open it just enough to get it down over all of the lens and and lined up with the groove. When you get it down to the, the bottom section one more all right, it's a little bit of a pain, but uh, a task. But get get the, the the ring on the inside, and gently work the oil control ring around the outside, and make sure that it is fitting completely in. Um, just a little side tip. It's been my experience that getting the oil control ring. Uh, in the proper place. It is the one most likely to get broken when you are installing this in the piston. 
So now we had the, the, the gap in the spring on the inside at this point, and now my gap on the uh, oil control ring is on this point. All right, um, no problems. Um, you should be able to squeeze that together a little bit uh, just to make sure and hold it into, into place. The next thing to do then is start with your, uh, your second ring. Make sure that you have it positioned with the, the right side up and put it on your piston. Now if your gap is here on the oil control side, I want to put my gap for my second one 90 degrees away from that. So I'm going to rotate this around so I can have it towards me. Put it in the spreader pliers or the ring installer pliers. And I just want to open it so that it goes past the piston. I don't need to spread it any further. And what I want to try and do is have it move down and go into the groove without having any um, any twisting. Now you can see it just jumped into the first groove on me because everything lined up so I'm going to spread it again go down to the next groove. Alright now this is kind of a good one to see if you see on here we have an additional groove here that is kind of a false groove. Where that is sitting now, that is way, first of all, that's way too much play side to side, and it's not deep enough. Look how far out that ring is past the piston. Put it back on the bench, the pliers, go to the next groove. And install it. There we go. All right. Now the last step is install the top ring. Now where this one, right, we have our bottom opening is here. My second ring is 90 degrees from it here, and my top ring will be 180 degrees from the second ring. Roll it around so you're putting it in the right position. Look for the up. Position the gap in the right spot. And simply use the spreader pliers. And go again, just so that it goes just over the piston. Land, and it's in place. Then check your alignment on them all. Alright. Um, the rings sh uh, should not be in alignment. I'm just getting everything turned around and there's one and there's the other one right there. So I have my top ring opening is here. Second ring is sorry gotta find it again. It's moved around. Um, I would say whenever you go to put these in the piston, you can roll these around. They don't have to be installed, but as long as you know that they're supposed to go not lined up. The whole idea of not having them lined up is that if all the grooves were lined up, it would be much easier for combustion and compression to go down past there uh, through the little gap and, and go into the crankcase. The, the, the principle is that if we put this one on the opposite side, as the gas goes down past, it has to travel around that area and then down through the next uh, second control ring opening and then past the oil control ring before it gets into it. And if you think about the time but that piston is moving down in the cylinder, um, it, it's not very long at all and by the time it gets to the bottom it's already changed direction and going back up in the other opposite direction. Alright, 
So when you're installing, always use a set of pliers. Uh, there are a couple of other devices out there for smaller uh, automotive pistons, which they actually grab and hold everything flat. Never use your fingers and walk it off and, and, and around the opening. That will create a twist in the ring and it will not uh, do a good job of sealing then when you're, you're looking for your engine to last. Alright, a couple of things to inspect on the rings. All right, um, This ring set has a trapezoidal top ring and a rectangular second ring. Now we cannot check the the clearance or for wear on the top ring because it is trapezoidal but we can inspect for side clearance on the uh, the second ring and just to show you how close it is um, this is a four thou feeler gauge and you can see that that ring is very loose in there but I can't get a four thou in or it's very tight but I'm going to try a a three Come on. And there you go. A 3,000 fits right in. All right. So what I am checking here is ring side clearance. So that is how much room there is between the ring and that groove uh, or, and, of the, and the land. All right. Um, Something else that we should look at, and just in, and again the names, right? We've gone over these already in the other earlier parts of the video. This is the crown, the crown, which is the top, the top of the the piston. Uh, we have our grooves, which are cut into the side. The whole thing is called a ring bell. The the lands are the outer portions of these, so there's land, 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 uh, and the entire ring belt is slightly smaller than the skirt. All right, um, I wanted to, to talk about this as well. Um, as I said, one of the main advantages of this is that we have a lot of surface area for this to, to touch the, the, the um, cylinder wall, so it's good heat transfer. But it's just something you, you should know that when we are or looking at or describing some of the styles that um, we look at how a ring fits in the groove. All right, and we're going to talk about that when we get to the next one and looking at more rectangular rings as well. But for a keystone or trapezoidal ring fitting into a groove, the groove is also the same shape as a trapezoidal ring. And if you think about this, if I'm going to use the red just to draw the ring in here. The ring sits into the groove like that. Um, what we want to know is how that fit is in in the piston and there's no real way to tell is I push that ring in it's kind of like adding a pushing in on a wedge it's going to become very very tight so the method that they use is a little different for this ring only we install what the, a specific gauge pin into that groove and on the other side of the piston, we are going to install another gauge pin. And they're usually, when, they're, when you're looking at measuring this, they will come uh, like with two little uh, springs to hold them in place. All right. When that sits into that groove, you take your micrometer and you measure the distance from the outside of the gauge pin to the outside of the gauge pin and that will determine uh, your specs will tell you what that maximum that measurement or the minimum that measurement can be and that determines whether the groove is worn or not all right